Okay, now we go to the Great Pyramid. I mentioned briefly about the Great Pyramid. This is a stone structure put together with precision cut stones, no masonry, no mortar, stacked up. It sat there for God knows how many thousands of years. Uh, and what's amazing to me is these structures, the normal ones we look at are 2,000 years old. This guy could be 10,000 years old or older. So I said to myself, what's inside of this structure that's so fascinating? So whoop, we go into the inside of the Grand Gallery. Grand Gallery is here. And inside the Grand Gallery is an upside down washboard. Bingo! And here's collection slots down at the bottom of here. If they could pump water up in there, bang it against these washboard upside down circles, uh, there would be a little gold mining operation. But I said to myself, wouldn't the whole thing have to be watertight? Wouldn't all the passages have to be watertight? The pit have to be watertight? The king's chamber watertight? The queen's chamber watertight? And the grand gallery watertight? If they are, they're all watertight. And I said, well, why would they go to the trouble to make that all watertight unless they had some really interesting thing to do? So I did a diagram. And if they built, they found the remnants of this uh, moat. They built a moat around the base of the Great Pyramid. And they filled it with Nile River water. Now, the Nile River collects gold from the Nubian gold fields. Every spring runoff when the Nile floods, the gold comes down the Nile River. And here's the pyramid sitting right next to the Nile River. And it, they lifted the water up in here by this uh, exterior moat wall. The water would come down the uh, entrance, the grand entrance, come down to the pit. And before there was electricity, there was a system called hydraulic pulse generators. People use this before electricity to pump water. And the way it works is kind of complex, but the water surges down, it bounces back up, and shoots the water to a higher elevation. Well, that's exactly what's going on here. The water comes down to the pit, bangs up, goes into the grand gallery, and eventually gets into the king's chamber. And it, it pulses back and forth, causing it to knock the gold down. But what's interesting, to prove this theory, this is where I got the scientific community by the shorts. This sarcophagus here is damaged on all the outside corners. Every edge has been destroyed by pounding on it. Now, Archimedes says anything that's hollow will float. So if the water got into the king's chamber, this sarcophagus would float up into it, bang around hitting the wall's edges. The evidence is here that it's damaged. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, the damage came in this corner. And it got low enough so the water got into it and it sunk. And that was the end of that mining operation. Now, how it worked is like this. Water comes down, hits the hydro pump, bangs it up into the Grand Gallery, surges back and forth in the Grand Gallery, gets up into the King's Chamber, floats the box, bangs it around in the walls. But what's going on here, folks, is that gold is being separated out of placer water by an upside-down washboard. And the 27 slots on the side of the Grand Gallery could have sheepskins in them collecting the gold. So I've heard a lot of explanations about what's going on inside the Great Pyramid. This one fits my cup of tea. I think that I've solved the problem of the Great Pyramid, what it was originally built for. Now, of course, when it sunk, when the, I don't know what this thing did, the floating uh, sarcophagus, but once it filled with water, that was the end of the operation. They did other things with it. beautiful part about Anunnaki technology, they always had three or four other options they could use to do it. So, we'll go to Chichen Itza. Again, here's a...